Zoom recording. So, hello guys. Now we are recording. Uh, welcome to Makers Club. You! Firefly to Grasshopper plugin. So, this is a really, really, really useful and especially funny plugin that you are gonna you, you can you are able to use it with Grasshopper. You know that Grasshopper is already a plugin, an embedded add-on for Rhino, in which where we can install different uh, uh, abilities and different other secondary plugins to enhance their capabilities. And luckily, because we will connect and use Arduinos in this case. Arduino Unos, AtiTinys, also you can use your Node MCU or ESP boards. Uh, the compatibility through the USB by hardware to actually the programs needs to be done in a strict way that Mac doesn't allow it in the Rhino, Rhino version. By so, I mean that Firefly will only work in Windows. Um, sorry, um, something that even if this plugin is quite old because of the development stop it in 2015 is still really powerful and most of the functionalities are really useful nowadays but as they stop the development they have not made the update to mac because rhino for mac was developed i think in 2017 or 2016 the more or less the beta version so do you see my screen So as always, if I have Academy, you go to clubs, make club. I also updated, if you want to take a look at the robotic arm class, the latest classes we did, I updated with the components, explaining how to actually use each component and the examples files that you already had from other sessions. You have the 3D printing plastic, sample, robot files, how to install the plugins, etc. So let's go to Firefly sensors and actuators. Uh, if you want to follow the class in your laptop, you can download all the example files for this class just in the main link. Just click on it and it will download a zip file with all the Arduino and Grasshopper codes. So you need Rhinoceros, Grasshopper, Firefly plugin. Actually, if you see, I'm clicking, it goes to Food for Rhino. That is one of the main repos for downloading plugins for Rhino and Grasshopper. And you have all the download links. Actually, there are different versions and usually the opposite. The latest one is the newer one. Just check out the dates and you will plan easily see. In my case, this version didn't work, but, and I have Rhino 6. It, this, this, sorry, this version worked better. Also depends if your Windows is 32 or 64 bits. Nowadays, most of the Windows are 62 bits. Also on the top one, you can find the Firefly user guide. That is a big PDF explaining kind of a little bit of at the same time uh, Arduino and how it works and, and also Grasshopper. We also will need the Arduino IDE. That is a normal Arduino compiler to actually program our Arduino so we can make it compatible with Firefly. Okay, this doesn't keep downloading. <laughs> uh, I also attach it here, the official Firefly guide that I can open it, let's see. That is more or less a 50 page tutorial on actually really good knowledge of Arduino. For example, the output in digital, how it's done, and how to explain the different parts of the coding of an Arduino, where you have the void setup, the void loop. We already are already gonna assume that you know what is the void setup and void loop for this session, and blinking. So it has a lot of Arduino explanation because you need to need need to have a little bit of knowledge of this, what is remapping, and after we'll jump onto Firefly basics. Firefly has a lot of tools and not always we need to use an Arduino for it. We will see later what that means. <laughs> but first, let's kind of amaze you of what you can do with Firefly. So let's watch some little videos. I attach it. So actually, um, Firefly, you can use your webcam 
to actually draw and design three-dimensional shapes. So for example, is this guy just uses his webcam, is slowing down a little bit the video. And what he will do basically is process the image as the same as you will do in Photoshop, but he will do it live in Grasshopper. So actually it can take like bit mapping, bit bitmaps and process to get extract the contours and then the contrast, etc. So it's more or less like a simplified Photoshop and you can even convolutional filters is quite powerful in that aspect. Once you have that, you can actually change the pixel colors by remapping the colors. We already saw a little bit of remapping in Grasshopper. And the most interesting part is you can transform this into a three-dimensional topography of your shape just by the colors. You can do this by extracting contours, uh, by making contrast between different colors. There is a lot of ways of processing image data. And actually, if you don't have a lot of knowledge into OpenCV and Open Frameworks, that is the, normally co the normal code that we use for image processing, is a visual interface that is more or less easy to use. For example, in this case, it's assigning, uh, it's mapping the latest movement to actually assign vectors to show like the drag of the pixels, in which direction it was dragging the pixels. Let's see other tools. <clears throat> this tool also works with uh, video. In this case, is image recognition, especially on contour, contour taking. Let's take out the sound. And even in Firefly, you can install more plugins inside Firefly. Like you can use Kinect, for example. You can use different vision engines. In this case, you are drawing with a webcam on a high contrast paper with, for example, yellow and black. I think I can, can put in bigger. No. So actually, it's extracting, let's see, bigger. It's extracting the contour, and based on the contour, it's able to extrude the shape. So it can be done if the, if the color is black everywhere, you can do the same height. If you can do gradient on the color, you might be able to actually also change the height of extrusion. We will also go through these kind of things today. More examples that sound is especially funny to work with is how to create shapes with sound. In this case, creating a basic surface, adding some data from the microphone of the computer, and using Kangaroo, that is a big simulation to actually tweak, make this surface work as a fabric in tension. So in the moment you start using the microphone, let's go to the end. So actually you can make the surface vibrate according to the music itself. That is quite fun. So it's a really nice uh, plugin to actually make not only this input assignment weak, but also the interface one. Because actually you can interface and from a lot of the sensors that you want to use and interface it instead of using processing, where visually processing is a really nice tool for visualization and for creating interfaces, but you can also use Grasshopper for it. If you are curious about this, you can also go to uh, I totally don't remember the link. I have it here. Mm -hmm. Food for Rhino. You can go to Firefly Experiment. That is a all web page of Firefly. If you go to gallery, you can see a lot of examples. For example, Kinect hand tracking, a computer vision, robot milling of sound, static networks, uh, 3D printing with robots, and actually Kinect also. So is, this plugin is, gives you a lot of tools that by defect don't, don't do anything, but they are really useful to actually embed in other systems. For example, you can even install a Breathe OSC that is an iPhone app 
to actually blow the microphone of your of your phone and tweak this flag to make it work as it was real wind. But there's a lot of examples of this, actually, a lot of examples from for architecture applications. Uh, like responsive facades and everything. So the first thing you want to do is download Firefly. Uh, you will need to test the different versions. And we need to upload a code to the Arduino. <coughs> Why we need to upload a code to Arduino? Actually, we need to tell Arduino what to do with the information of the sensor. So one basic sketch will be actually read the sensor. For example, we can use a ultrasonic sensor, or you can use also a button sensor, <laughs> microphone sensor. Really, all the sensors, or most of them, are available unless you have a really complex uh, library behind it. For example, this is a magnetic hole sensor detects magnets, but you can use all of them. I have tested also this uh, Firefly with the ESP32, and unluckily it doesn't work by the, with the defect sketch. But today we will work with custom sketches and the defect sketch for Firefly. How to explain this? When you install Firefly, if you open Arduino, Arduino, I'm opening Arduino. Takes a while. What is Arduino? I don't see Arduino. What is it? It says it's open, but I don't see it. Sorry, I think it's frozen. Let me close. Ah, it's here. What's behind your your webcam stands? <laughs> so when you open just the new sketch from Arduino, you have a blank page like this. And we need to upload a code to the Arduino compatible board. It could be an Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, etc. So we're going to put inside the code. By defect, when you store Firefly, if you go to File, Sketchbook, Firefly, from Data, you have three, three examples. We Nunchuk, you remember the Wii console that is for playing, like the was with the hands, so when you start playing tennis and this kind of electronic sports, actually you can also connect the Wii with Firefly. You can use also for moving the stepper, stepper motors. That is slightly more complex, that's why it has its own sketch. But by defect, it's the Firefly firm data. The firm data uh, has a sketch that is already completely done. Let's take an overview of what it will do. So by defect, it gives us capabilities to install in Arduino Uno, Dicimela, Duemil Nobel, Lilipad, Mini, at the mega boards like the RAMs or the big mega board, some Leonardo boards and Due boards, like some compatible microcontrollers. And it defines what? One key point in this sketch is define the baud rate. That is the speed of communication of the Arduino and our computer, because we need to send a lot of information between the computer and the Arduino in line. So we want to have high speed, so we don't have too, too much delays. And it has defined already all the pins and what each pin is going to do. So uh, enables that, to, that the pins 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 6, 7, 5, 3 are already ready, ready for writing, it means for actuating outputs. And the ones that are for reading is from 0 to 5. and two to seven, and we, it give us and allow us already to have some servo libraries inside. And this is basically all the configurations to have all the ports of the Arduino working at the same time bidirectional. 
So the good point is we don't need to code this. This is already done. We just need to upload it. And this will open up to connect whatever we do here and just configure it into Grasshopper. We don't do it into Arduino. This firm data sketch is, to, is for people that are not really confident on conf or comfortable on coding, but just on the Arduino, on the Grasshopper interface. So I'm gonna connect the Arduino to my computer, it's here. And I'm gonna select Arduino Uno, okay, COM6. Okay, I'm gonna upload the code. Edward, I have a question. Yes. So when we predefining the pins here, uh, what if we change the board? So it's gonna be compatible for each board. For example, what if I'm using a mega? So it's gonna be different type of. Uh, we define uh, we define that in Grasshopper. So what we are defined here is kind of like a metadata that we are just putting there. Exactly. Here we don't define anything. In here we upload everything. It doesn't matter if it's an Arduino Mega, an Uno, a Duemile, or Leonardo. And mm -hmm. in Grasshopper, we will choose exactly what kind of pins we are going to use. Okay. Uh, this is to work with Firefly in transparent Arduino code. It means we don't make custom Arduino codes. Uh, initially, it's easier, but it's not as powerful in the case we want to use, for example, the node MCUs because it's not compatible with the node MCUs by defect because this Firefly is already old and USB didn't exist before. For that, we will use other kind of coding. And actually, I, I uploaded on the class link some examples even to work with the smaller chip as possible, that are the 80 tinies. 80 tinies by default doesn't have serial communication. It means we cannot communicate from the IT tiny by defect to the computer. So we need to use a library that is called software serial. And I already upload the sketch that we also go through it. So I already upload the code. Some of you might find that this doesn't work and it will show an error message. The error message it will show is write to that not defined. That this is because it isn't giving me this error because I already changed my code. But the last lines of code of this sketch are wrong. They are not like this. Actually, this line is up here. And by so, this sketch doesn't work. So the only thing you need to do is change the order of lines. And here you have the good sentence that you can just copy and paste it in the same position. Or you can also download the correct file from here. So, now that we have done already the Arduino part, I'm going to close Arduino. No, I don't want to save my changes. I'm going to open up Rhino. Rhino is opening. I added in the class also some examples on how to make the wiring connections and how actually the interface will look like. Also, we will use, for example, for today, ultrasonic sensors and uh, some microphone and video cam sensor. It's opening right now. It's not opening. Let me see. Okay. I'm going to also open Grasshopper. It's already open. Really nice. So, Going to put in split screen. Do you see well my screen? Okay, so this is the normal interface for Grasshopper. I just see a lot of lot of plugins, so I need to look for which one is Firefly. Firefly is yellow most of most of times on all the versions. So the first thing we need to do is actually define from left to right what we're doing. So let's choose the boards. The first thing we want to do is choose which COM we are using. What is the COM? Anybody remember? The COM is a communication port to actually communicate through serial, through to or Arduino. So let's see the COMs available. 
I'm going to put also bifocals so you see clearly. Comes available. Why? Because sometimes we have a lot of devices connected. In this case, I only have one Arduino and we have the COM6. That means our Arduino is connected to COM6. If I disconnect the Arduino, it's not updating. Why? Because we need to put a refresh here. What is a refresh? It's a refresh timer. Uh, no, everything updates all the time into Grasshopper. So we need to put something that tells this component that needs to be checking all the time for any updates on the COM. So if you click on timer and you just connect and drag, it will update. You see, now that my Arduino is disconnected, it's checking each second that my COM is available. I will connect my Arduino and the COM shows again. So now I'm gonna, I need to open or close my port. It means if you have, let's say, 20 ports, you need to choose which one to open. You cannot open all of them. So we need to connect the port. We're going to have to put also a Boolean as a true or false option. It means we wanted to have it on or we want to have it off. This is important because when you want to upload a new code to your Arduino, you need to disconnect it. When you have it in true, it means we are using Grasshopper to connect directly to the Arduino. If you have false, we are not connecting. We are not updating. And we need to choose the baud rate. As you remember, is the speed of communication. In this case, we were using a fast one. I think it's this one. I'm missing one zero or not? No. So how I know that I was, I was using this baud rate? In Arduino, if I open again my sketch of Arduino that I just uploaded, is opening here. It was the file sketchbook Firefly firm data. I can see one of the things is defining is the bot rate. I just need to copy this number and put it in here. Let's also put a panel because it will show us a message stating what is happening. Serial port is closed. You must first open the serial port before reading and writing values in Arduino. Okay. Hooray! The serial port is open. It means we are communicating properly to our Arduino. In this case, we don't care too much because we are not doing anything. We are, don't have any sensor connected. We don't have any output doing anything. So, What's the next thing to do? As you see, we have the compatibility of different boards. Arman asked before if we need to program and choose exactly which board we are using. The only moment where you need to choose which board you are using is in tools. Select the proper tool you are, you are using, Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega. We don't need to change anything in the sketch. So it's in here where we define what we do. If you use the normal compatibility, the firm data sketch, you can use Uno read, Uno write, Mega read, Mega write, Due, and we have serial read generic, serial write generic. This is in case you use your own Arduino sketches, your custom ones. Let's go to Arduino Uno read. So it's asking again, what? We always have the option to turn on and off because sometimes your computer might freeze because you can, you are input to so much, so much data. You see, I'm going to close, start, port. We need to also state which port I'm connecting because you are, you can connect different ports at the same time. It means you can use different Arduinos. I never try to connect more than two or three Arduinos, but you are available. So if you have a really a lot of computer with a lot of hubs, maybe you can connect 20 Arduinos. Let's also put some panels on the pins. Right now they are all off. And this is just because I want to show you the pins. Let's just connect randomly. Okay. So now I'm going to open my port. You see, it's stating some numbers that they are slowly changing. What? By 
because my, my refresh data is at one second. Usually we want this to happen really fast. So I want to change it to 20 milliseconds. It's the update of readings of the Arduino. We are reading data of the Arduino, it's 20 milliseconds. You can reduce this to one millisecond, but it will start freezing a little bit your script. In this case, we don't need a lot of speed, so we just see why the numbers are changing. I'm not gonna answer this question. I want to, you to guess why. So anybody can guess why these numbers are floating, even if we don't have anything connected to the Arduino? I guess it's the wave of the voltage that is like going because it's like an analog uh, voltage that it's going up and down. So I guess we have to, for example, I don't know. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So all the power supplies, you have zero and five, no? A digital data is either zero or one. That is full voltage, no voltage. That is a digital. That's why in digital pins we have zero because we don't have anything. But in the analogs, we have a lot of states. We have intermediate states. What happened is we are reading voltage. And our computer, even if it's a really fancy computer, the voltage is never stable. It's changing a little bit. So actually what we are reading is actually the small difference in the voltage of the computer and on the Arduino because it's not completely stable. Yes? Okay, that's why uh, you remember when you connect a button in your, of your AT tiny of the board you design it, you have the plus and you have the microprocessor connected directly to the button, no? To have on off. And you remember that you have a resistor to ground. Why? Is to make this little voltage different be taken out by the resistor. In this case, we have the pins open and we don't have them. The pin is called, is in floating state. It's not neither full low, neither full high. So it's not floating state and sometimes the floating state is not accurate. In this case, we don't care too much because right now we don't read. But for example, I'm going to connect, for example, pin zero, A0, zero, uh -huh. And I'm gonna connect it, for example, to uh, ground. Let's see what happened. Zero. In the moment I connect A0, AP0 to ground with a cable, a jumper cable, it's in zero. What happens if I connect to five volts? Let's see, five volts. Actually, it's reading the maximum from the sensor. So it's good, more or less. It's almost completely the 1024. This is kind of a little bug that we really don't care too much in Arduino. That is the A ref voltage reference. That is something that you need to take into account if you want to do accurate analog reading. But let's don't worry about that too much right now. Let's do something. Let's blink the LED from the board, the LED that is embedded in the board. So let's write something. To actually switch on the LED, the LED in the normal Arduino Unos are in pin 13. So it's pin 13. We want to do what? Write high or low, no? To switch it on. Let's put a button. A button? Is actually what? False and true. It's a Boolean. Being true one and false zero. So let's first connect the port. The port is exactly the same port. And let's 
start to wrap. Okay, which pin we want to connect to 13, that is the embedded LED. So if I click, you see, it blinks. You see my webcam? I'm making blink my LED just with the button of Firefly. And we can see in out exactly what kind of data we are inputting and outputting to actually the grasshopper. So we can see high, low, high, low, high, low. Wow, amazing. We are blinking an LED. So let's try to do something slightly more complicated. Right now, we are already reading and writing to our board. We can do audio processing, networking, and we have some utilities. Utilities are actually not only useful for Firefly, but it's something that especially if you have, you manage complex data, smoothing and PID are something that you want to use in most of your grasshopper sketches. So let's do a binary blink. Binary blink, I'm going to take this out, is going to ask what? What is the pattern of blinking? Start boolean, it means you want to start blinking or not. So I know I want a boolean, that's one, that one is easy. Right now I don't want to do anything. And we have the repeat. I want to always repeat the same pattern. So blink pattern is asking us for the time in milliseconds that we want to change from zero to one. So let's change each second. So if you see, the number is going to be changing automatically each second. If we change it, it's going to change really fast. What happens if I connect to my pin? I can easily change the speed of blinking of my LED. And right now, this is just an LED, but this is any kind of digital output. It will work with everything. What happens if we want to have different times? Let's say I want to blink each 100 milliseconds and after one second. It's going to change all the time between both. Yes? Good. Wait, my Arduino just fall. Uh, so, for example, let's do something else. Let's connect an input. I'm going to wire a potentiometer. I have a potentiometer here. You know, I'm going to show you what kind of wire I'm going to do. Just type Arduino potentiometer is one of the clear examples. And I have one of these small potentiometers, the blue ones. Where is my, similar to this one actually. Let's hope I connect everything properly. Let me look for the cables. So potentiometers need, need to be connected in ground, positive, and analog. Ground. Actually, I'm going to look directly for the breadboard. Compatible option uh, is this one. I have. I'm using exactly this one. Let's see. I need one cable more, and I'm going to connect to A zero. Let's see if it works just as it is. Yep. 
you see, right now I'm changing my potentiometer of position, twisting it, and I'm changing my AO pin. Y is also updating the rest of the pins. Hmm. That is something tricky and funny of Firefly. If the data, and it's not only about Firefly, it's about trust cover. You remember, if I don't have data to fill other lists, I repeat the data. Happens the same with the pins that we are outputting of the Arduino. If you have another input data, it's going to repeat the data from the other pins. It's like echoing the same data. But if you connect another sensor to another pin, it will still work the same. It will still work fine. So for example, I'm gonna repeat data ground. Let's see if I can connect ground. I don't have the jumper cable. Yeah, right now I have connected A1 to ground and I have A1, A0 pin to the potentiometer. You see, only the data from A1 is changing, not the data from the rest of the pins. You see, a pin 4 is changing a little bit because as it's not connected to anything, it's still making a little bit of uh, voltage change. It's floating a little bit. So, okay. This, what could be used this kind of things for? I have two parts. I have the part of actuating and I have the part of reading. What I can use this for? Okay, just, and we have just one line of data, so I can, for example, for example, construct a point. Okay, I'm gonna construct a point that right now is here. I'm gonna construct a point that I can move it in the space. Simple, not really difficult. Okay, we can establish a simple rule. For example, I'm gonna draw a rectangle and I'm gonna check that if the point is in here. So I'm gonna curve. I'm gonna make the reference. I have a curve and I want to test if the point is inside. So for that, we have a component that is point in breadth. I think it's around here. Uh, maybe it's in points, curves. Point in curve. Okay, I want to check if this point is here. What are the results? Zero. What being zero? Zero is outside, one is coincident, two is inside. If the point is inside, let's move it. Actually, the point is inside. I'm making rules. My rule is if the point is inside, it's gonna give me a two. So I can make an equation or equivalence because two is not high or low. I want to make equivalence. If the result of this testing equals two is true or false. So what I can do is erase this. I'm making a small video game, actually. If the result is that it's inside my LED, this is difficult actually to show you at the same time on the screen. <laughs> if my potentiometer is inside, if the point is inside, switch off the LED. If the point is inside, switch on the LED. You see my LED is blinking a little bit. This is not exactly completely stable because if we look at the data, the data coming from the point is not exactly smooth sometimes it's changing a little bit so that makes the value change a little bit 
I'm gonna take this other cable I don't need right now. Uh, okay, this cable I can get. So this happens a lot with the analog sensors. Analog sensors are gonna have some um, evil data. It means data that is changing all the time. You see, just by moving a little bit the wires, the resistance of this pin changes. I'm going to do the same with another sensor. I'm going to do it with a microphone. A microphone like this is going to have an input signal, has a voltage plus, voltage minus, analog and digital. This is a sensor breakout board that gives digital and analog. I'm going to connect the analog pins. So let's see, um, positive, blue, ground, and pin analog. Actually, you see my, my data, I'm speaking, and by so, the point is updating really, really fast because this microphone is right now is really sensible. If I hide the microphone, you see it's changing, not that much, but right now I'm speaking and it's like really too difficult to work with this kind of data. It's really annoying. So what I want to do is I want to smoothen the data. I want to take in account the 10 values before and the 10 values later. Or I can just buffer. I can just, for example, if I have one, I'm getting all the data all the time. Taka, 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 taka. I can say, okay, take 10 of these ones and make the average. And this is my data. So that is called a smoothening. That is in an utility and we have different ones. For example, a smoothing average. A smoothing average is a component that allows to sample some there's certain amount of data. For example, let's connect them both. The value you see now is a decimal because it's making averages. What happens if I increase my number of averages? Right now, the defect value is 10. It's five, it's really small. If I increase to 100, you see, Actually, it's more or less changing. Ah, sorry, the pin is disconnected. <laughs> Only when I speak, changes a little bit. Actually, I just sample too much. I have to reduce a little bit. Because every time you sample, actually, you are reducing the sensitivity of this sensor. If I, if I close again the microphone, it doesn't move and samples a lot. We have also a smoothing tempora that is similar, but does by a smoothing factor. We don't take in account how many samples we are taking, but if we want to sample a lot or not. I don't especially like this one, but it's another option. And we have constraint that is a similar component as a remap that is oh sorry not this one remap you remember what remap values does it takes a number where you know the maximum and the minimum that is the source maximum domain and keep it between some numbers constraint will be the same but we don't know the maximum and the minimum because we have some sensors that we don't have calibrate them. We don't know how to calibrate them because we don't know the maximum and the minimum of those sensors. So what we can do is constrain them. I don't care if the value is 10,000. I want that the maximum is always one, for example. Or I want that the maximum is always five. So constraint is a, domain, is a component that also works like that. And we have PID. PID is a component that is actually tricky to understand but really useful and actually all the temperature 
or your house temperature thermostats and these kind of things usually if they are good they work like this like this so actually it's a PID controller a PID controller is a series of equations that we don't need to do we just need to assign some values for P I and D that are the predictability for the changing let's say for example let's see my webcam okay i have a temp i have a heater that is on and the temperature is rising before i reach the temp my temperature goal i need to switch it off why i don't want to switch off when it has already reached the temperature why because the heater will still be hot and that means if i switch off my heater when it's at the temperature it will still heat a little bit more and after the curve it will go higher and after it will go lower so for that we use what is called a PID controller that, mean, that means the height is my hair okay if the temperature is rising up I switch off before raising the topest point but enough to reach my temperature and before it start coming down I switch on again so it just doesn't go down too much so it kind of previews in time to switch on on and off before it has to actually do it and this is a PID controller and this is how uh, like all the modern mechatronics and robotics and stability systems drones work it's pre previewing algorithms and actually they do that by checking in the past and in the future predicting the future so P is actually um, values is the hard hardness of the change e is the how fast the change needs to happen and d is kind of a smoothening value between them by defect is this component tricky to use but i recommend you to take a look look at it okay we can smooth in average of our sensor so actually we can you can see my value is changing not really much i can for example connect and I can see that my point is changing. But slower, it doesn't have that real time feedback. But it's a component really, really, really important to use. OK, this is how you work with firm data sketch. In the sorry, is this one? Yeah in the in the class link here at the top you have some example files that have uploaded that are basically these ones so let's go one by one on them so we have the firefly on off why is not open this is frozen oh where is this message ah, here. so actually let's try to open my port oh why why this is happening any clues i cannot open my port first maybe the port is wrong let's see the pump comes available it's something that you always need to do actually the com is six and the port is open already but we have something that you want to never do in grasshopper and firefly is have the port the com open in two different sketches at the same time it's really important that you never do it because it's going to freeze your laptop so fast in the moment you do something that is slightly complex so this is the example on off is the one we did before how to write digital set signals to your port let's close this one and this is my cuckoo how to open ports we already went through this one okay we have for example blink pattern we already went blink control and this blink controls the ones that the all the these files that are in folders is how not is how to do it without the firm data from 
far flat, not using this sketch. It means making our own sketch that sometimes is more interesting or you will need to do it in case that you are not using a compatible board like the ESP or the Tiny boards. So let's go through them. So for example, let's blink the same thing, but with our own custom sketch. I'm gonna close this one and I don't need to save this also. I'm gonna close this one. So let's open the Arduino and let's blink this one. Arduino is opening. Okay. So you see the code is quite easy. In fact, it's not really difficult. It's we want to do what? We want to blink an LED. Blinking an LED is an example that you already know and it's an example of basic blink. The computer is really slow when it's recording. If zoom. Where is? It's all the time behind the cameras of zoom. Um, so let's compare. So we have the definition of the boy of the pin. It means pin mode, the built-in that could be in pin 13, for example, is an output. And I want to write high in the pin 13 each second. That's clear. How we do this with Firefly? With Firefly, what are we gonna do? We have the computer, the Arduino, and the computer. We want that the computer sends highs or lows. We want that the Arduino reads, actually, the communication of the USB all the time, to be reading the communication. So for that, we need to use serial begin. That means open the serial and the communication speed between the Arduino and the computer is gonna be 115,200. The next thing we want to do is define what we want to activate. For example, the pin. We're going to use pin, actually this is wrong, it's pin 30. We want to, this is the definition. And what we want, want to do every time. If I'm receiving any kind of data, if serial is available, I want to serial parse in, it means transform the data to an integer. An integer will be 0, 1, 2, 3, full numbers. I want to transform the data I'm getting from the serial into an integer. And I want to serial print the value. Why I want to serial print? Because if I have the computer, and this is the Arduino, I want that if the computer sends a one, the Arduino receive it and send it back to the grasshopper. Why? To check that we are receiving the data properly. It's just having a communication between both. It's gonna bounce back, it's like echo. The, the same as you go in the mountain, you see echo, and the mountain reflects the sound back. It's gonna do the same. Okay, this is just for repeating the data, but the data, the values that we are getting from Grasshopper are stored in this variable, that is this integer, that we're gonna call it val. And we can do a comparison. If the data we get from Grasshopper equals one, switch on the LED. If not, if equals zero, switch it off. And we put a small delay. We need a small delay and actually this delay needs to match the one we were using with Firefly to have proper communication. Because even if we are using the same serial co communication speed, they need to more or less run at the same internal clocks. Even if we are not talking about clocks, etc. but we cannot have a sketch that works really slow because if the sketch works really slow, we might lose, lose data meanwhile sending. We need to send and make them work at the same time. So this delay is important. Let's upload this one 
Arduino, COM6, ok. So, loading. Really fast. <laughs> oh my God, really? I'm oh, sorry. If, actually, you see the pins were brown. I was writing pin seven. I need to put pin 13. That is the internal LED from the Arduino. I need to repeat again this. Okay, so now I can go here and you see I have ready this one, we don't care. Uh -huh. I have my, set, my timer already at 20 milliseconds. I have the port, the message in and out, and the data. This is actually, this component is a stream gate, allow us to choose between zero and one. True is send one, False is send whatever is in zero or something really useful actually in Firefly. This also this component. So let's open the port. It's open. And actually we are, we are sending what? We are sending this data and we are reading the data back. If we click in true, the LED is blinking because we are sending highs and we are bouncing back the data. So it's exactly the same as the firm data, but we are doing with all custom components. You see these components looks slightly different than the Arduino Uno read and Uno Bright. You see here we have all the pins. In this case, we have all the information printed here, just in one line. And this is somehow problematic. Why? Because let's say we print also this serial print, we print the value. I'm going to modify this sketch a little bit. Serial after the value, I'm going to write echo. Just the text echo. To be able to upload the code, I need to switch off my port. So after the value, we're going to click echo. I upload the code. OK. And now if I switch on, huh, it's not doing it. That's weird. Why? Let's update this one too. And you know why? Because we need an LN that is jump line. It's something somehow so a little bit tricky in the way how you send data from Arduino to Firefly. You have different components like serial write and serial read and also serial print and serial print LN. Each one works slightly different. For example, Serial print send an string after each data and serial write doesn't. And that sometimes confuses Firefly. You see now I just change it serial print by serial print LN it means change the line. So it's giving us zero echo, zero one. Let's say this data is centimeters. This could be, for example, centimeters from a ultrasonic sensor. Let's say we are using ultrasonic sensor. But the standard sketch for sensing ultrasonic sensor send us, for example, 150 centimeters or 180 centimeters. So we're going to send information to stack it like this. And we need to split this data so we actually can use it because in the grasshopper we work with numbers. We don't usually work with text. How we can do it? Actually, in the text components of Grasshopper, I think it's in operator, what is text explit? Mm -hmm. I never remember what it is here. Text, 
explit text explit for example bifocals is going to ask for what text i want to split and at what are the separator characters here i don't have any separator character but i can add one separator character for example my separator character could be an empty space or could be a dash so i'm gonna make that my separator actually is a dash and for that i will add the dash in my arduino code so i can it can help me so it's really important how you process the data in your arduino code so you need to put a dash a commas or spaces before any kind of them let's upload the sketch okay we can open it again and now you see the data has is been splitted so i can work for example with different sensors at the same time or with different values let's work with another one of these ones for example the ultrasonic sensor where are the no i don't want to save this ultrasonic sensor so i'm gonna open the arduino open the grasshopper arduino is open it and meanwhile i'm gonna grab the ultrasonic sensor and i'm gonna wire it as you would wire any kind of normal ultrasonic sensor i need to connect positive and ground trigger and echo positive and ground i know how to connect is five volts and ground and trigger and echo i don't remember actually so i'm gonna check in the code this is the normal code for reading a ultrasonic sensor i have to connect my pin pick pin is seven so actually trigger pin echo pin is six echo is the green six and seven i have my serial speed and this is just the normal reading from any arduino code and i'm, and I'm gonna read and it's gonna give me in seconds the centimeters and the distance okay i'm going to upload this code if you don't know if what is not working and is your arduino or your butterfly just upload any examples for testing your ultrasonic sensor or your analog sensor or your digital sensor just before to avoid checking that maybe what is wrong is your wiring so i'm uploading this code i need to switch off of course Graph Firefly, it's compiling, might take a while. Green. Okay. Done uploading. So I'm going to open. I know that the pin, the 46, so it's open. And actually, you see, I'm reading the data all the time. So I want to split at what? I want to split at pink. I put in a space because I will have another separator that will be centimeters. And you see, and I get a list of data. That this is something that is really common in Firefly. You need to clean the data. So you use a list item to select where you get the data. Oh my God, why is not working properly? It's super slow, my computer. Sorry. Yeah. So actually, this is my clean data from the ultrasonic sensor. And again, I can I can use this one 
to make, for example, a circle. I can make a circle that changes all the time the distance. You see, but right now, this, the circle can get really big or really small. For example, what we can do is use a constraint. That is a component that I showed you before that is really, really useful. I want that the maximum number coming up, I don't care about the distance. Oh, sorry. Because I don't know the maximum distance that this component can read. I don't know if this ultrasonic sensor can read 70 kilometers or not. I don't know the maximum. Actually, I know. Ultrasonic sensor usually read a maximum of three meters but they don't do it accurately. So I want to constrain. I want to set up a limit. Construct domain. OK, and I want that the maximum is 500. And the minimum is 100. So the circle diameter is going to change all the time according to the sensor but constrain it if i get over and the sensor gets above the value that i want it's going to be ignored actually the value is really small it's really big this one so i'm going to put 10 centimeters maybe five centimeters to So actually, you can see how the value is being constrained. And you see, it's getting, again, the same shakery because it's getting the data really fast because I'm updating each 20 milliseconds. I'm going to also smoothen my value, smoothing average. I'm going to smoothen. five times or maybe 10 times. So processing the data is something that is really, you see, now it's working better, but with a slightly delay. So how we can avoid this? We can read the data, not each 20 milliseconds, but read each millisecond and do less smoothening or more smoothening. Okay. For example, this is how you read data from a single sensor. OK. You can close it. Let's do audio processing from our microphone. Actually, I don't know if this script is going to work, because right now I'm using the microphone to talk to you. So let's hope it works. OK. Let's see. Actually, it's frozen. One second. OK, now it's super slow. The computer is super slow. Oh, yes, it's working. I'm going to lock the solver. Oh my god, it's super slow. Mm -hmm. What is taking everything? Phew. Actually, my rhino just froze. It's working, but I cannot do anything. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, <laughs> I need to close it. Sorry. Uh, Exit, please. Zoom is taking 50% of the computer resources. I'm opening again. Instead of going with noise, well, I'm going to first lock the solver. That maybe some of you don't know, but in Grasshopper, you can lock the solver, that is, freeze everything before opening the sketch.
Okay. So I'm going to try just with audio. So in audio, you can go not to the frequency, sound capture, tone generator. So we can go to frequency spectrum. And actually, I'm just going to put a timer so it doesn't update really fast. I'm going to update each second. So it goes slightly slower. Interface. OK, it's 200 milliseconds. So actually, you see, this is my sound graphed into a map. And the outputs are slightly, we have the peak tones, the note volume. So the volume for each one, we have the frequency. I think it was the frequency, this one, peak frequency. And also we have the peak note. What is the main note that we have in our audio? Other tools that we can have are also the camera, snapshot, snapshot, webcam, video stream. It's going to freeze again, but of course, I don't, I cannot access the webcam because I'm already using the webcam. So I'm going to stop my video right now. Stop video. Okay. And let's try to see if I can access my webcam now. No, doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you can see me into Grasshopper. Uh, <laughs> So we can take data also from here. And these are the sketches that you have here. Camera input, camera input, and audio processing geometry. As I said before, I can lock the solver. This freezes everything. So now I can open the sketches, in theory, much more confidently, because it's not going to freeze my laptop. Actually, I got a new warning. Object frequency spectrum, not valid display routine. Display performance might exceed affected for this session. So that means Zoom is taking everything. So here I was taking, I was making averages. Okay, move. Okay, let's do it. But in here. So we are getting Peak notes. This, for example, let's do a simple script. I'm going to take this component out and switch on my video again. Okay, so I'm going to make a circle. I want to make a circle that changes the radius all the time based on the node. Actually, you see that the circle is changing just meanwhile I'm keep speaking. The circle is too big. So I'm going to put a constraint, construct domain of between 500 and 0. Uh, domain, values, and values. Oh, sorry. So actually, you see, when it's getting bigger, it cannot get out of the circle. If this is not remapping. This is constraining to a maximum. A remapping could be different. So actually, I'm setting up a higher limit. Actually, my limit is quite small. Actually, I need to <laughs> change the scale because this is too small. Or what I can do is reduce it is divide, division, divide my number before it gets too big. For example, between 10. So now, if the circle gets, let's see what are the values. I'm getting an average between 80, 40, and sometimes 300, so it's more or less okay. I'm going to also smooth in a little bit my average. And I'm going to do before constraining it, before it gets constrained. So 
So now the values are much better in general. I'm going to constrain 50 times. I want that this circle changes really slow. I'm going to divide by 50 just to have less sliders. Okay, so now the values is checking based on my voice. But this is a basic thing that I don't want to do right now. I want to have like kind of magnetophone, so like a vinyl disc, for example. I can make a circle. I can, this is distracting me. I want to make a circle of 100. I want to divide the curve into, for example, uh, 50 points. So I want that each point represents a timeline of my voice changing. changing. So for that, I need to move the points to the exterior. How I can move the points to the exterior? I can create vectors of movement between two points. Vector, two points. One point will be the point, each point. Another one will be the center of the circle, the area. I can just take it with, in case it's not a circle, you can take it with the area component. In this case, it's a circle. We don't actually need this one, but we can do. And we want to unitize the value. That means transform the vector into units. So this vector is not anymore this size, but one. Sorry, I forgot to put bifocals. Bifocals. So I want to move the points based on the vector. I want to move the points based on this vector. You see, they are moving a little bit, but they are not moving according to my sound. How I can do this? I can put a multiplication, for example, and multiply this value by 200. So I can control the size of the movement. What happened? I, want, I need to have one different multiplication for each one of them, no? But here, let me, uh -huh. I only have, just because here is in the frequency spectrum, one number. How I can do this? For example, if I connect this one here, the points are changing all the time, but equally, I need to buffer, buffer in time, all the values. So for that, I can store values in time. Buffer is something really, really useful. Let's see what is happening. Buffer is storing the data right now and the previous one. You see it's updating up and down, up and down all the time. It's storing the values in time. So I have a buffer domain of 20 values. So actually, I don't want to change this one too much, so I'm going to reduce my points. And I have 20 values that I can multiply for the 20 different movements. So actually, you see, my points are now changing based on an historic time. This is difficult to preview, but as I have points, I can remake again my curve. You see? Okay, let's close the curve. Invert. But you see again, my curves are my values. It goes a little bit slow because I'm updating each 200 milliseconds. This happened 20 milliseconds. It's updating and kind of giving me a frequency spectrum visualization of my sound. Is here? Yes. It's when I speak really close to the microphone. Let's see. If I speak really far, it's getting smaller on time. So actually, the first value 
that is this one, list item, the first point, ooh, the one that is in green, is the update right now, is the live update that will be this part of the circle. So we know that, that this is the historical one, and this one was 200 milliseconds ago, this one 400 milliseconds ago, this one 600 milliseconds ago. So actually this is a graph, live, live graph of my sound. And we have the constraint of the internal one. You see these numbers are not constrained. So ideally to have everything under control, we will do as we have done here before, setting up the constraint. So actually you see now the values are changing, but we are averaging a lot. This is clearly too much. Oh, sorry. So let's average only seven. So actually the sound changes faster. Okay, we can do this with sound or we can do this with a ultrasonic sensor. I'm gonna data because this is just data. I'm gonna disconnect this and I'm gonna open my Arduino because I still have it here connected with the ultrasonic sensor, serial read. I know the port, we just been using it all the time. And I want to put a boolean to switch it on. I want to check that this one is working properly. Oops, you try to read before opening the port. Huh, common mistake. Before reading anything, you need to actually open the port. And you need to tell it the baud rate. You can connect just one toggle for both. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. In this case, it didn't work. Okay, ah, we are also missing the timer. Without timer, we will not do anything. Remember in the late, latest sketch, we were using 20 milliseconds of dates. So on, we are getting proper, yes. Okay, reading values. We have the ping. that is updating all the time based on my distance, hand distance. This is data that I have sent with the Arduino. I need to break this. Break. Sorry. Let's see what is the component is text split. I want to split text in pink and centimeters. And my value is five and sometimes 3000. So I want to list item this value and is in the count number five. So now I have my data that I can process. You see, now this circle is gonna be a graphical representation in time of my values. What happened with my values? I'm dividing my values a lot here. I don't need to divide them, let's ignore and let's even not do averages. Let's do two samples average. So actually you can see the position of my hand when I was far and then when, when I'm getting farther, just by changing the position of my hand. This is just one sensor, but we can do also is for example, mixing this with sound and make three-dimensional moves. How we can do a three-dimensional move? 
oh no, erase this one. This, we're gonna go for the sketch. Camera input. That actually you see me right now, so I need to stop the video. Okay. I need to put a timer again. Doesn't like so uh, Firefly webcam do the stream. Okay, I'm getting nine FPS. I'm gonna reduce my resolution a lot. Oop, not that much. Okay, and I'm gonna do it at 100 milliseconds. So the update is not really fast. What I can do is process my image. And this is all this is just for image processing. You have color filter, exposure, invert, resize, replace, edge detection that is really useful, contrast, enhance. This part of here is for transforming uh, bitmaps. And the, this under part is for actually connecting Kinect sensors. So it's really useful actually to get deep of field and three-dimensional reconstruction into Firefly. Let's do a simple one. It's not three-dimensional reconstruction, but we can use, for example, the focals. We can do edge detection. So actually, you can see me here detecting the edges of everything. And we have values as the threshold. For example, let's go from a threshold of 0, 0.0 to 10. What happened with I change the threshold? OK. I can enhance it. Before doing this, what you usually want to do is process the image a little bit. I'm going to make more space in the top part. So one of the things I want to do first is, for example, enhance the contrast to help me actually Bitmap Painter helps to see what I'm doing to enhance actually the image. Actually, this is too much. Oops, it's, the values are from zero to one. So I have no contrast, and I'm seeing the contrast. Okay, maybe I also want to light up the screen. Uh, exposure. It's a webcam of the laptop, so it's not going to be the fanciest thing ever. Actually, exposure movement. Ah, this is not, ah, look, actually this process and only lights and lightens me, 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 me up if I move myself. So actually you can use this, for example, for movement detection. The video processing tools are actually quite good in Firefly. It's not fast, so if you want to do a super light performance, it's not the best one, but it's easy to use compared to other tools. I'm gonna to switch this off. And for example- hey, hey, Edu, yes. can Tell we us. do this slide in the input device week? I think it's super cool. Huh? <laughs> uh, you, can, yeah, you need to make Basically, a sensor from a hardware device. <laughs> uh, super cool. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, and the best one that actually I'm gonna reduce the size actually of this because right now it's too much is mesh from image that is transform my image into a three-dimensional mesh and you see my lines so i'm going to display out my edges so actually you can see me making a three-dimensional surface holy shit <laughs> And you can scale the set up or scale the set up down. Here I, I added 
something. For example, I added tax. Why I'm doing this? This size. What is this normal size of? Is it millimeter? Any clue? Actually, this is the working size of the small milling machines. So I have a three-dimensional map of me. And of course, I'm a machine freak. So what I'm going to do, if it doesn't freeze, is I'm going to extract the contours. Extracting the contours allow me to actually cut my image. And it will be a different contour extraction because we are, doing, we are doing it from the mesh, not from the image. So actually, I'm getting the contour of myself. For example, I can erase it. And now, if I change a little bit the properties of the image, I can transform it a little bit. I can simplify the curve, for example. I can project it. So actually, and now I have a 2D. You can use a pen plotter a laser cutter or something to engrave yourself or to cut yourself. But this is just with a normal webcam. Imagine that you have an image tracker, the same as we saw in the examples, with a line that you can actually make it three dimensional. Okay, let's go with the next camera sketch that I know you're going to love it. It's crazy. Okay. Camera input two is this one? Oh no, sorry, it's the same. Actually, copy the sketch twice. Uh -huh. That is video to G code. Please don't freeze. Okay. <laughs> so actually, here I have the same video processing I was doing before. I just froze here. You don't want to do this sketch at once. You want to internalize the data when you have a steady image that you want to do. But actually, you are able to control this in life with the machine if you are sending the data one by one, updating. But right now, in the conference, it's too small. So I'm choosing the size, the feed rate of the machine, the speed, travel speed, the clearance, for example. Um, what I'm going to do is a little bit of processing. So I have my curves, no? And I have a lot of small things that I don't want. So this is a little bit of cleaning up. So I'm going to divide by distance, two millimeter distance. This is too much, but for the examples, works well. So I'm going to check in each curve how many points I have. If I have less than, for example, 10 points, I don't want the curves. So clean them. So I'm taking out the curve that have less than three points. For example, this curve, these two, this curve has three points. This curve has one point because I'm dividing by distance. This line is divided in two millimeter, two millimeter, two millimeter, more or less. This one is only a fit one. So these lines are too small. It's like trash, unvalid data. So I'm counting the amount of points I have in, in each line. So the first line has 200, 238 points, but the third one has two points. So if the count of points is less than 10, take them out. So now I have a more or less clean image. And just with that, this is a normal G-code post-processor that basically what it does is transform a point. For example, this will be, I don't know where it is, this point, sorry. All these points. And it will put the X coordinate in G, one, X, zero, the Y in Y, the Z in Z, and the F is the speed. So actually the data is, G1 move to this point, this point at 2000 speed. And this is with endpoints. And basically, this is the code cleaning 
that I didn't compile, so you can more or less investigate if you're curious about it. And this is, for example, a straight G code for a machine. In this case, could be uh, actually if Z3 is in the air, so it's Z0, should be, for example, for a CNC. Okay, let's try to see other examples. Uh, 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 uh. Open serial, modify geometry. Uh, I like this one. This is the last one. It's not mandatory, but it's good to have it. Sorry. True, true. I have my points, I have my distance. Actually, this is another way of cleaning up. I did it last year, but in this case, let's don't do it like this. I don't know. I have I have tissue anemone. Do I have? Okay, anemone is a plugin that is really really useful. For example, it's a recursivity program so that means for example let's say i have a zero and i want to add this component goes inside the zero we're going to add one a lot of times why addition defined between integers and points what What? I think it's just, okay, no. It was with wrong data from before. Okay, so it's gonna take this data, it's gonna add one, and it's gonna move it back. How many times? 200. We're gonna repeat this loop 200. So if I put A counter here is going to repeat. You see, the number is growing all the time. It's like loop addition. We can do this not only with numbers, but we can do this also with geometries. We can add geometries after one of each other. So, for example, let's say we have this line we want to modify the angle of this line based on the distance of the ultrasonic sensor so let's break again the same mm, let's, let's test explit i know it's being not centimeters oops sorry uh, let's split The value I'm getting is 39. This update is really slow. Ah, because actually the sensor is not moving. <laughs> um, list item. Five. So I got this number. The data is more or less clean. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a point. I have this point and I'm gonna deconstruct the point every time. And I'm gonna Add what to the Z? I'm going to add the value from Firefly plus pull some additions. So actually, if we have the first point is this one, we construct the point that is next one. And we loop again. So what will happen? 
actually the line is growing really, really fast in the space. Let's see. Woo! Base also on the modification of my Z, or I can update the data directly from my Z. Let's see what happens if I just change it now. So actually, it's making a line basing on the distance of my sensor. So actually, I'm changing the distance all the time. And it's making looks because it's a a curve, not a polyline. It will be much better to actually make a polyline out of this. So not a polyline. So it doesn't make weird things. So it's like a heartbeat, three-dimensional heartbeat. So it's a way actually to draw things away. You can do this with anemone or you can go much, much simpler. And the last, last, last example, <laughs> I'm gonna create a three-dimensional shape. Actually for this, I think I will take um, a curve, a primitive, I'm gonna make that the radius, I'm gonna constrain my radius, or actually I want that the radius is always the same, 20. I want to remap my values. No, actually don't want to do this, this one. I, smooth, I want to smooth my values a little bit. I want to put a constraint of my values. Of maximum, I want to create a shape of maximum 20, 20, poly, uh, 20 faces. And before doing this, maybe I will divide. Actually, it's easier. Divide, division because we are getting at maximum 3,000 all the time. So I can divide by 500 or 200, let's see. Let's see what happened, just if I connect this one. And this is the radius and this is the segments of my So actually, I can change the shape. You see, it's too small. So actually, it's not working properly. So I'm going to constrain between three and 20, just in case. So the value never gets out of range. Actually, you see. It depends, I'm making like this, so the sensor is really sensitive. <laughs> I can extrude it the same way. In Z, the same value. I'm gonna multiply it, just so it looks fancier. So I can create modifiable geometries. What is the sensor? Ooh, ooh. All the time. And by so, you can, actually it will connect. This sensor is not really accurate, so I'm gonna connect a potentiometer. Ah, but for that I need to change the sketch. So let's, let's keep the way we were doing. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. This is in ground. Uh, Edu, just one question. Yes. Uh, you are basically like just visualizing the, the data you are reading, but like, like uh, how can we go further than this? I mean, have you ever tried to do anything with, like from Brashopper to make something tangible? I don't know. I just think. Yes, about. for example, um, you can, let's say you're getting the sensor from an ultrasonic sensor. Mm -hmm. That is a past sensor of uh, installation. You process the data with gas copper, and after that, you can use it for actually move again some things. For example, servos or producing sounds. Mm. This is for cool. Example, yeah. For example, let's say uh, you can make people sit in front of the laptop and uh, process the video camera, extract uh. the contours, and make a machine actually move in life based on the contours of the person. Uh, but but um, yeah. But it's like going continuously, like in real time. I mean, yes. Yeah. Mm. Oh, doing doing in real time, real time, like no delay, is hard. Yeah, but yeah. Having a little bit of delay is more or less quite easy. Okay. Cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I'm gonna divide less. Mm -hmm. More or less. You can see that actually it's about the processing of the image of the sensor you are getting. This is your simple example with two types of sensor. Imagine that if you connect like HAL sensor, light sensors, LDR, I don't think I have an LDR here, but it will be the same. So Firefly is not, doesn't do anything on its own. It's actually a set of tools that allows you to actually interface with the Arduino. And you see it's changing all the time. <laughs> Meanwhile, I speak also because I'm moving the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, you have also frame rate that is kind of the same as the timer. You have also an option that is the if geometry is selected. Actually, this is quite cool in case you want to create interfaces with Rhino, for example. Uh, that is, you need to put an ID. Huh? It's super slow. So you can assign this uh, breadth, for example. Oh my God, yes. Well, it's like different. Um, you need to work a little bit on this, but it's, if it's, you select a geometry in Rhino, it gives you an update. For example, you can create something like a output interface. Let's say you have some volumes of a geometrical, I don't know, are you running city? And each time you move one of the buildings, you send a signal to the Arduino, so it buzzes or it produces a tone. Or if you make a build, move the building higher in Z, for example, it moves with a higher pitch. If you move it higher in, in Z, lower in Z, it produces a lower pitch sound. You have more utilities like detecting if a key is pressed. Key to test, for example. I'm going to test letter A. Let's see if I can test this one. If I press the letter A of my keyboard, it's not doing it. It needs to be with a timer, I suppose. Yes, exactly. With I'm pressing the keyboard, I, it's updating all the time the compound. And like so, you can do a lot of things. I recommend you to look at actually the the examples, these ones are really, really, really cool. And I think they will open up, especially for Tue that asked me what to do with this, <laughs> way more than I can do it because the examples are really, really good. For example, how to actually, I saw this morning one, 
that I love it. It was um, robotic milli of sound. Actually, this is similar of the sound processing we were doing before, but actually processing to send the code directly to our robotic arm. But Boolean depositions, for example, how you can make this more complex. In this project, actually, Firefly is almost transparent and you don't see an interface or you don't see anything. But actually, you have a robotic arm that is, sorry, we'll take the sound out. Yes, you have a robotic arm that is filling up uh, hot wax into water. Okay, this is more, more or less weird, but you can do it without Firefly. But the point is, it needs to fill up the water when it has reached this point. So actually, you have the, the robotic arm connected to Firefly, to the computer, sending a signal to an Arduino. So the Arduino switches on a water pump motor to actually augment the level of water. So each time the robot is in a certain position, it augments the water because this one, this water pump is activated by an Arduino. And how do you connect the Arduino actually to make it in life with the robot? It's not by default. You actually, in this case, they were using Firefly to augment the water level. It's a little bit overkill, I know, but this example but there are other ones that are better for example they have seen a lot of examples in facets for this one uh, fixing machine texture light touch screen light responsive upper active or controlling for example a simulation servo so actually with the interface you are it's a way to connect hardware low low microcontroller hardware to your computer so in this case it was tracking with firefly you can also track your mouse and you can control in life the pan and tilt of a stabilizer uh, or in this case for making sounds or kinetic pavilions mm -hmm. Delta post test, robotic platforms, there are a lot of these ones. Kinect tracker. So actually it knows exactly where you are, where you are moving and looking at. Actually, Daniel knows a lot of this kind of virtual AR things. So I think it's much better to ask him. <laughs> but <laughs> so actually you can make, for example, the model always point looking at you. So this model is rotating and the 3D model is moving in the space depending on your location based on the Kinect tracking that is making of you. So actually you can see real three-dimensionally. I suppose the Kinect is this little light up. Or Arduino control, simple. For example, you can light up ILT just by raising up your hand like a Jedi or a servo with the other hand. Okay, so that's for today. Super cool. How I can stop sharing the screen? Yeah, hello. I hope you like it. Uh, Very nice. Um, if you ha I, Firefly is not that complicated at the end if you know a little bit of Arduino. The most difficult part is actually how you program the Arduino code to make it easy to transfer to the Firefly. That for me, that's the most difficult part. But if you use an Arduino Uno, you can use a film data sketch the the one that is by defect this one 
that is more or less transparent and works in most of the occasions unless you want to use a stepper motor or something that it needs really good timing but for example with servos also works really really well most of the sensor analog and digital sensor unless it's a really specific temperature sensor that needs a specific library will work well um i really recommend this one for like last year a lot of students did the interface with firefly because it was easy for them like they were confident with rhino so it was a nice way to interface for them um for example this week is about inputs you can sense things with an arduino and your sensors but we are asking you for sensing things different sensors what you do actually with your data up to you you can just see numbers on the screen on the serial monitor of arduino or whatever you want um this week tomorrow um mdf has the final term presentation of this term no sorry <laughs> how are you going and wednesday we will have nil class as always uh, i don't know but we will close well spain is closing up for more or less one month in total and right now so no problems until now we just move the molding and casting assignment everything is more or less controlled and you will have time to finish up even so we want to have the uh santi already sends you a link to have a meeting to tell you about updates etc for this academic cycle etc so we you know we answer your questions except the, and you can ask whatever doubts you may have about how we're going to manage the online video conference class in general are you okay with the quality of the video like the classes and the content okay i know it's yeah 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 i know it's much better to have in class everything in class but yeah but i'm thinking like i need a like a second like a monitor because it's super hard to manage it in one monitor look <laughs> exactly if not as impossible yeah even uh, even with two, two monitors i feel that they need another third one yeah now i can understand why neil has like six seven monitors <laughs> okay so bob see you tomorrow. i have a question yes tell me uh tomorrow we are gonna have a project review or not yes the final project, project the project review is together with um with the regional review. Oh, okay, okay. So the regional, it's gonna be yes, the regional, exactly the regional reviews as the assignments are going slightly lower than they should. Mm -hmm. And basically the regional review is mostly us and two more guys. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna mostly run all final project reviews. And actually we want to push you to actually start not closing up, but closing up exactly what you want to do. So you start prototyping digitally as much as possible. Okay, okay, perfect. Actually, as always, uh, think twice, cut once. Now is the best time for it. Actually, now you can think 20 times and just cut once <laughs> in the moment we open. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.